Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome back to this week's edition of our Local Marketing Institute Q&A session. My name is Eric Sheinfeld. I'm with Local Marketing Institute, and I'm uh, really pleased to introduce my good friends, Ben Fisher and Jason Brown. How are you doing, guys? Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, we got a really good session today. Lots of things that we were talking about uh, as we were preparing for the, for the show. A um, couple things just to let you know, if you're interested in getting a hold of Ben, Jason, or me, uh, you can get a hold of Ben at steadydemand.com or at the social dude on Twitter. And you get a hold of Jason at reviewfraud.org or at Kaiser Holiday on Twitter. For me, you can find me at localmarketinginstitute.com if you want to reach out and, uh, and talk to me. Um, a couple things just to encourage you, if you're not already, uh, go to Facebook, search for Local Marketing Institute Connect. This is a completely free Facebook group, although we are very picky who we let in. Uh, Jason Brown is our resident spam uh, spam guru here. He will squash out spam even on our own Facebook group. Um, but the people who are here are really high quality businesses, consultants, local search experts. We've got an amazing, really good group of folks out there who can help answer a bunch of questions. Uh, and if you're not already subscribed to our podcast, uh, go and check it out. You can listen to all these episodes on your favorite podcast platforms. Again, just go to localmarketinginstitute.com and you can find links where you can subscribe on any platform that you would like. Um, that's it for just the announcements here. Um, guys, we got a lot of stuff to go over with here today. Let me get some stuff set up to, to dive in. And then we will kick off the session here. Uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations to Jason. Jason has reached a level 10 local guide on Google woo and has the carpal tunnel syndrome to prove it. No, no, no. All my fingers work just doing a bunch of suggested edits trying to wipe out some really bad, nasty network. So between a company that had like almost 4,200 fake listings in the United States and some spam in other parts of the world, I've got uh, 19,865 edits under my belt and I'm going for 20,000. <laughs> well, so, so now you know, if you want to become a level 10 guide, that's what you have to do. You know, we almost 20,000 edits almost. <laughs> yeah, five points yeah. each, five points for each edit you make. And Google's wow. going to ship you a cookie. Well, no, they said, no, they said, they sent me a lovely GIF in my in my email inbox. You I even it heard it was an animated GIF. The animated GIF, <laughs> exactly. Ooh. It wasn't co it wasn't coffee. It wasn't a coffee GIF, which I would probably need, right, uh, Andy? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Uh, well, anyway, congratulations, JB. That is no small feat, and um, you know, Jason is out there, and frankly. He does a ton of work out there on the map trying to clean stuff up. Yes, that's his job, but he does a ton of stuff just gratis, trying to help keep things clean out there and help companies out. And uh, really, really impressed by that, JB. So congrats. Well, well earned. Thank you. Um, speaking of some, uh, some interesting issues here, let me share my screen real quick because Jason, you just put out an interesting tweet that got my attention. Another business got spanked by Google, lots of reviews for review getting. Now, granted, this was back in May, but um, you want to talk a little bit about, I know you can't talk about the specific case, but you want to talk a little bit about kind of what's going on in general. And I think we should revisit review gating again, because I think there's a lot of businesses that still do it. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's a question we get asked all the time. And so review gating is basically you send out a little survey and says, hey, how do you do on, you know, level how do we do for service level from one to five or one to 10? If you do, you know, eight and below or three and below, then they say, oh, please send us private feedback. And there's no option to send that review or review them on Google. You do like a four and a five. And then they say, oh, please share your review on Google. Well, Google doesn't like that. So they came out with, uh, they added it to their terms of service a couple of years back. And usually what we typically see when a business gets reported for review gating is Google will just go back and remove the reviews dating back to either when they initiated that policy or they're able to find concrete evidence and proof that the company started using that review getting uh, platform, right? This one was different. This, this company actually had a, a few hundred reviews before they ended up using this well-known and well-documented review gator. Now we don't know if the if the platform is no longer review gating, 
but Google actually went in and they wiped out almost like 9,000 reviews. So they, they zeroed this business completely out even prior to the, the policy being implemented that they were review gating. And so it's a, it's a really interesting situation. We're still waiting to figure out some more nuances to it, but yeah, I mean, this company got hammered hard. So it's one of those things we always tell people you upset the Google gods and the Google gods are going to come in and, and, and lay the smack down, but to lose like almost 9,000 reviews. I mean, think about that. You lost 9,000 customer reviews mm. and, you know, and you're basically starting all over from ground zero. And as soon as the business got hit, they got like 11 more reviews. So it's definitely one of the little things that you just want to, you know, keep, keep an eye on. Could you um, just to, just to reiterate a little bit about review gating, just because I think you did a great job, but I want to make sure everybody understands this is, first of all, this is a policy for Google. It doesn't necessarily yes. apply to other systems, right. but with, with Google, if you intercept, if you ask them to leave a review, that's fine. You can have them leave a review, but you can't intercept bad reviews. And there's a lot of review systems that will let you intercept the bad reviews and you just handle those offline. If they, if they say, oh, if you want to rate us as an eight, nine or 10, then, oh, here, go leave us a review on Google. That's the review gating. Right, exactly. And the big, the big issue here is that if you're found, if you're caught, uh, so like Jason said, these guys lost nine thousand reviews across all their locations. So oh, no, just one, don't do it, no, guys. one location. That was one location. One, that was one reviews. location. Yeah, yeah, one location. Wow. So you can darn well bet the other locations are going to lose reviews too. They only had that one. No, they only had that one location. It's a. It's a oh, I'm single sorry. Loca- you said they had multiple locations here. Mm, I don't. I'm not sure I said, I'm not sure if I said that if that was a misspoke, but no, they had the one location and that one okay. location lost, but there's other, but there's other people that are using. Yeah. Uh, there's only, and there's other businesses that are using that same, that same uh, vendor. So yeah. between, between their marketing company or their citation management company, they're all pulling in with this one company. Got it. Makes sense. Well, nonetheless, I think the lesson learned here is guys just don't do review gating. I mean, you think Yelp is tough on reviews? Yes, but you end up review gating and Google will 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 spank that especially if they if they discover it. And it's not that <laughs> difficult also to to yeah. to really discover. You look at a competitor's business, you look at the review system and you can find out whether they're gating or not. So it's not that difficult. Right. Um so Ben, anything else you want to add about the review gating stuff? No, not really. I mean, it's, I, I will say this, you know, like you said, there's a lot of companies that are probably using this software and other software that allow, allows for review gating. Um, one of the biggest tragedies, quote unquote, that can happen is if you go to Google support for any issue, they will take a look at your profile and sometimes they will take a look at your review profile. Yep. Specifically, if you're going after, and let's say you've reported a negative review right on your profile, they could take a look at it and then they could just uh, evaluate them all and be like, you know what? These are all bad. These match our filter. Mm. And so we see that happen all the time. I mean, we had a case where somebody got two fake negative reviews and they have been purchasing positive reviews as well. Um, And we went to Google and talked to them about it and Google took down quite a few positive reviews. They left the two negative reviews up and then they were like, well, how come they remove these? Well, Google thought they were fake as well. So got it. Watch out. Good. Well, bottom line, guys, there's a whole thing on, on, on reputation management. Don't buy fake reviews. Don't buy for, for you or for your competitor. Don't do review gating. Just do it legit. And the amount of effort you're going to spend doing that will pay off better for you in the long run anyway. All right. I want to talk about something else here. Jason, or not Ben, you, you posted recently here about uh, something about posts on yeah. GMB and a way that you can find the source of how people found that. Yeah. So, you know, we, we always are talking about conversions, right? Um, and when we're here with LMI, I'm just in general. And so one of the things that um, we never really knew was is A, do Google My Business posts actually drive conversions? You know, you can check the UTM tags, sure. But, uh, and also B, well, the messaging service. How good is that? And does that cause a conversion? And so um, this is, a, I think, a, a great step in the direction of Google My Business showing a merchant 
where their communications are coming from, where their conversions are coming from. And in this example, I mean, this is great. This is a, a message. It just came in and it says it came from a Google post. That tells me that, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Doing Google posts actually works. Oh my gosh. Um, Love that. Hopefully that will expand this and allow it to say, well, this came from say mobile, this came from your GMB profile, you know, et cetera. Um, that would be really nice to know, but just this piece alone, fantastic. Yeah, no, this is really cool. I hadn't seen that yet. So that's, um, I'm, I'm loving it. And this was a, this again, to, to, to clarify, this was a message sent through Google My Business. Correct. Messaging. Yeah, I do also want to say one thing that I'm currently investigating, and that is, is that it seems like there's actually a bug that's I found I discovered as well yes, uh, today or yesterday, and that is is that um, basically push notifications do not appear to be working. I've been able to replicate it. So uh, if yeah. anybody in the audience wants to try and send a message to somebody and see if they get a push notification. Um, That'd be fantastic. And we could even verify it a little bit further, but I think it's a bug. That'd be great. And meanwhile, we have a little tit for tat going on between a, a level 10 and a level nine Google product, you know, Google My Business uh, or what are they called again? Google product map. Epic, local, no, local guides. guides. Local, local guides. guide. Yeah, local guides. Sorry, I'm. I, I don't have enough time to 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 be that good. I'm. I'm nowhere near even in the league. But I, I feel like we've got <laughs> a. You insult me, Eric. <laughs> anyway, moving right along because I'm gonna. Do, I'm. I'm in dangerous ground on that one here. Um, got a great question came in uh, before the session from Cordell asking what's the best strategy for getting clients on Apple Maps? We currently individually verify them with phone verification. So we had a little session on Apple Maps last week. Actually, I did a really, I did a whole session uh, at the Rocks Digital Conference on, uh, on Apple Maps that I'm hoping to get posted to the site this week. Um, but bottom line, it's still primarily telephone number. There really is no other method that they're really doing. I, I did say, and I wanna make sure to stress this, when you are when you when you create your the Apple ID that you're going to create the listing with, if you create an Apple ID using the same domain of your website, that does speed up the approval process. I've seen that in action because I've seen some people use their personal ones and it, it takes a little bit longer because of the verification. Anyway, that's really what it is. Unfortunately, there really isn't uh, any other methods right now unless you have. 10,000 businesses or more, in which case there is uh, an automated, more automated process for that. But uh, not 10, many businesses 000? have 10,000 plus locations. That means that they're I love going that after, that's a threshold. They're going after third party providers. That's why. Oh, they're totally going after third party yeah, like They're, they're probably talking like, that's why they got all the, all the stuff from Yelp and other TripAdvisor and other places like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and oh, by the way, you know, I just saw in the in the chat there, Nate and Jason, they're friends. They're they're just they're just having fun uh, bantering with each other about the uh, the local guide issue here. <laughs> um, one more thing I want to bring up with Apple Maps, however, is they're cracking down. Apple Maps is starting to crack down uh, on businesses, and specifically uh, SABs, because there's no concept of a service area business, right? Service area businesses are businesses that go to their client's location to do work. There's not necessarily a place that you can go to them. There's not an office or a, or a, or a store. So, you know, landscapers, roofers, you know, uh, you know, cleaning services, things like that. Um, so I actually just received this because I'm on Apple Maps as a service area business, but since they don't accept service area businesses, I just used, basically a virtual office, which you were, were allowed to do on Apple Maps previously. Um, doesn't look that, like that's going to happen much anymore. So I actually also had a chat with someone at Apple and they specifically said that Apple Maps is not is only designed for businesses that have a physical location. So heads up, they're starting to crack down on this and they're going to actually ask you to upload verification photos now. They're going to want to see this. So... Um, bottom line, if you, if you make an edit to your, to your Apple Maps listing, 
be prepared to be flagged if they notice anything interesting about that. Um, at this point here, I don't have a workaround for this because um, I am a service area business in this, uh, but we will see uh, how this works out. Wanted to make sure what you if, guys had an update. What if you, what if I hate to do it because it's, it's what, how I think, but what if you were to publish your address and not make yourself an SAB? Knowing full well, knowing people aren't going to come visit you. Uh, they're still going to want to see a um, uh, photo verification with external sign, mm, external sign or building directory matching the business name. How about doing cohabitation with another business just to get your verification? You could, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, bottom line, they're still not going to be as sophisticated as what Google's doing. So I could just say, hey, put up my sign and, and put it out there. I wonder if they, I, I remember it was, um, it was Joy. Joy showed one of the verifications that she saw that a business used where it was actually a piece of paper that was taped to a window oh, and worse. Google accepted it as proof. <laughs> yeah. Now that was a long time ago. That was several years ago. I don't think that that would fly it now. Doesn't fly uh, um, at all. But maybe it would fly with Apple. I should try yeah. that. Uh, and and Apple. and Tom Waddington. I mean, he's got that. He has that amazing, incredible gift where um, it was basically the same door, door being used over and over again, but different business names being put on it. And he, <laughs> I mean, so he, oh, I got I got to get that one again because that was like one of my fa one of my favorites. And you can just see the door the door stay the same, but the signage just keep changing. <laughs> that cracks me up. I love yeah. that one. There's, I'm trying to get to something here real quick. Um, let me see if I can get to it. Because I just want to say I agree with you nuts. here that Apple's probably way behind Google on this. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I agree um, with Jason. You should test it. So I wanted to bring up one more thing because someone in the, in the chat brought this up, Michael brought this up, that there's a, there is a, I'm not necessarily going to call it a scam because it's not really necessarily a scam, but there is a misleading thing going on out there. And you're going to see tons of these kinds of ads on Facebook, right? Or, or Instagram or other places, things like uh, all these, you know, all these, first of all, I, this is bull crap. 50% of local searches are done using voice search. That's bull. Um, but the whole fact that um, there's a lot of folks out there trying to pitch services to register your business with voice assistants, Alexa, Siri, Google Home, right? Um, it's not necessarily incorrect because what these guys are doing is they're using a system. I don't know if it's Yext or another type of system like that, Jason, but they're using a system to basically submit you to Apple Maps, to Yelp, to Google My Business. And of course, that's what powers those voice searches. But bottom line, you don't need to use these services. Some of these services cost as much as $200 a month because you, they, you, need, to be, you need to be listed on Alexa. I had another one here. Where was it here? Yeah, where was it here? Here we go. There we go. Can my business get listed on voice search? <laughs> uh, by the way, interesting, 2,100 comments, only 50 comments are live because they keep having to remove all the comments of people who are ripping them for this one. Um, anyway, just a little heads up, be aware of this. It's a little side note because of that. Uh, Michael, thanks so much. It's not necessarily a scam in that they're taking money and not doing something. They are submitting it, but they're using something like a, like a Yext or another submission service uh, to, to get you into these systems, which you could just do for yourself for free. Yep. So I thought I would share that. Anything you want to add to that, guys? No, you pretty much covered it all. Okay, sounds good. Let's go on here. I got that one. Uh, one more thing I wanted to, to tackle, then I'm going to get something you guys here, is um, there was a question that was coming up about Bing recently, and I know everybody's like, Bing? Who cares about Bing? Um, I wanted to I do, show. I do. You do? Yeah, I do. I care about Bing too. Um, so let's let, let's address a bit uh, first of all about the the, the who cares question. Um, number one, Bing is an important citation because it is it is a still a, a large site. Um, it is an important citation that helps overall add to your online presence. But this is some interesting stuff. Now, whether you believe this or not, now this is done by Comscore, very reputable research group. Um, you can argue whether you believe this or not, that's fine, maybe there's other things, but they specifically went not just to specific search engine use, 
but which search queries are being handled by which search engine providers. Because right, because Google powers other things. Sometimes Google and YouTube are wrapped together. Um, sometimes it's the app. Sometimes it's the website. So they're trying to say, hey, we don't care if it's the app. We don't care if it's the website. We're trying to see which search engine is handling the search query and returning the results. For instance, Bing powers Yahoo search results as well and, and other ones. So very interestingly, as of April 21st, this is what Comscore's research is saying here. Uh, Google actually powers around 62% of all search queries in the United States, whereas Microsoft is powering 26% of all search queries in the United States. So again, take this as you will. I know there's a lot of people going out there, oh no, Google has 98% market share. I see it, but you know, lies, damned lies and statistics, right? Uh, take this with a grain of salt. Nonetheless, it's important to claim you're being listing. And one of the things we wanted to talk about here, uh, we, we may, may dive into Bing a little bit uh, deeper. If you haven't claimed your, and optimized your listing on Bing places, I do highly recommend it. It's one of the core listings that we typically recommend. Um, but there's a really neat feature that a lot of people don't know about Bing places. Yes, you can manually do this, but you can also sync with Google My Business. So you can put your listings in here and then you can set them to synchronize with Google My Business. And it's almost a set and forget because it will actually look for images. It will look for the core data. It will even update hours when you update hours in Google My Business. So there's some interesting stuff you can do there. Um, when you do it, it will connect. I'm not actually going to do it, uh, but it will actually connect. And oh, no, I'm logged out. It will actually connect with, um, with Bing Places, uh, with Google My Business and uh, synchronize your information over there. So um, yeah, for some reason I got disconnected. There we go. If we go back here, let's look at sync. Not that, sync. Cumulative layout shift, darn you. <laughs> anyway. Uh, can, you link, can you link to that, stu to that study? Nate's asking for it. Yeah, I could totally give you the guys a link to that study. Let me put that into the chat here. That's a great idea. Gracias, mi amigo. De nada, de nada. There you go. Uh, yeah, Nate, it looks like you're also doing some syncing with, with, with Bing on that. So that's, that, that's a great thing. Obviously, if you're using a citation management system, right, if you're using Yex or some other system like that, it's pushing directly to Bing from your core data. So you don't need to do this. But if you're not, it's just a great little shortcut tool on that. Yep. All righty. Um, Ben, I got a good one for you, my friend. Okay, let's do it. Um, so Jeff is asking, what are the best practices when it comes to search engine optimization to regularly update images to your Google My Business listing and website for a local restaurant? So I okay. think they're just saying, hey, it's not talking about geotagging or anything like that. It's just saying, no. hey, how frequently should we be updating images on Google My Business and our website? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, images can definitely be a powerful conversion factor. And for a restaurant, there's another aspect to it, too. And um, it's going to be a little bit geeky. But basically, it's Google can, with Google Vision, right, can, uh, and I don't know if you want to go to Cloud Vision to show the website. Yeah, I can bring up Cloud Vision. Yeah. Um, and if you have a photo of food, throw it up there. Now, <laughs> any restaurant actually would do it. Um, I'll do what I can here. Hang yeah, on. but basically what it does is uh, Google automatically labels the content of your images, the text of your images. In some cases, even the location of your images, I don't want to get into that too much. It's not geotagging. It's a completely different part of their system. Um, they also track down uh, copyright as well. And more importantly, they extract what the entities are from that image. So for instance, you know, it could be... Uh, it could be a, a pizza, you know, it could be a steak, it could be a hamburger. Go ahead. Do we pull an image from the website or from the GMB listing? It doesn't matter. Go for the website, it's easier, be faster. Okay, if I can find something here. Yeah, like you maybe so hit the menu. Funky little things with their, here we go, we'll there, grab there this image go. here. But yeah, but I gotta grab a background image. Um, why not? Let's see what it looks like. Uh, because I'm lazy, I don't, want, I don't like grabbing background images. Fine, be that way. All right. So, um, so anyway, the reason why this is important is that, so if Google is taking a look at that, for instance, it's going to say pizza table, probably maybe even something about the atmosphere itself. Um, it will end up showing the proper image that you have on Google, my business next to a query. 
on usually only on mobile. Um, I believe I've seen it a little bit on desktop. But for instance, so if somebody is typing in pizza near me, this is not your, uh, your header image. It could show this image in search because it believes that this is about pizza. And so, um, so that being said, it, it's, it's something that's great from a conversion factor um, because you're showing a really great image. So there we go. So plate, and that's all tableware, but uh, then, then let's see, go ahead and click on, la on layers pizza, 55%, click on labels. Sorry, labels. There we go. So that's where basically, this is what Google sees in this image. It sees food, table, pizza, dishware, plate. Okay, and it goes down from there. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is, is that pizza is in the top three. Um, so, you know, what you probably, uh, getting into a different discussion of optimization is that, uh, you know, you, if, if you ran this through the tool, by the way, you could go ahead and throw another image in there, maybe with a bigger pizza. And that would actually come back with a confidence level, probably over 100%. Anyway, yeah, I want to go here for a second. I want to grab a, uh, of course I can't grab an image from here. Can I? No, you have to screenshot. Yeah. Let me, let me just grab... Let's grab this one here. So okay, to so answer the frequency question, the, uh, let me answer the frequency question. Go for it. So the first thing is, is that, you know, you, I think what you should be doing is, is as a restaurant, you should be uploading as a couple images a day if you can. Um, that's number one, right? So I don't think there's any hard, fast rule as far as numbers go like, you know, 10 a day or 20 a day, like that, you know, it's just like, it's what can you do that's going to be high quality and that's going to be definitely done from <laughs> circle. Okay. I, think I grabbed the wrong <laughs> screenshot. I grabbed the wrong <laughs> screenshot. That's funny. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So, and you know, the other thing is, is you might want to encourage customers actually to go ahead and upload photos as well. Because yeah. if you're doing that, it's coming directly from the customer, from their phone, they're sharing an experience. Why not have them do a review and upload a photo at the same time in that review? That's also pretty powerful. So there's that. Um, the biggest thing that we find is, is that, you know, most people actually just forget to upload photos uh, or, you know, they want their servers or, you know, to be able to take photos, but they don't want to give them access to Google My Business. And um, if you want to click over to the tool, yeah. I want to show you a quick tool that we have. And that basically, so all it's doing is solving that problem is you just basically enter in some cell phone numbers. We send a text-based reminder uh, on whatever frequency you want. And then you go ahead and you reply, take a picture, reply with that photo. Seven seconds later, it's up on Google My Business. So, so, so just to, just to clarify everything, Ben asked me ahead of time and I was like, Hey, this is totally cool because this is, this is a really great tool that steady demand has created called local picks. And it's just a quick and easy way for people to add photos to a Google by business listing through a text message rather than having to have access to the GMB listing. So that's why I said, Hey, yeah, go ahead and show it here. Full disclosure though, this is a product that Ben's uh, company steady demand has launched. Yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah, and, and that's why I thought this was kind of perfect because A, it's we geared it towards restaurants, number one. Um, yeah. and number two, it does actually, it really does solve the problem. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so basically, you know, as far as, again, it, the, the kind of rule of thumb is, is that there is no hard, fast number, but you should do it with some kind of consistency, shoot for consistency, shoot for good, real photos and high quality photos as well. And great place to the um, too. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chime in um, okay. because uh, Max Lopez says that they encourage uh, customers to upload photos, and I've seen studies to show that having your customers upload your photo gives you dual bang for your buck. So one, you get your customer to upload your photo, and these platforms, Google, Yelp will automatically ask them if they want to complement that photo with the review. So you're or A, you're driving them to your listing or your, your property. They're uploading a photo, which we know we are a selfie generation and people like to Instagram their food. So if they're going to Instagram their food, why not put why not ask them to upload their 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 dining experience directly into GMB or on Yelp? And then you're able to get reviews from it. So 
Um, so I'll, I'll do a little self self promotion, but I think it's it's a it's a it's a good one here uh, for this just to show you guys. Um, we do have an article um, related to all this for Yelp on how to ask for Yelp reviews without getting in trouble. So I, I love what you guys were saying about the you know getting the the um, the photos in through uh, GMB and especially asking people to, to, to leave photos in there. Uh, I wanted to also throw this here. I'll put this in the chat. Um, but bottom line, and I just tested this again yesterday uh, at a coffee shop here. You can ask people to check in. And when they check in on the Yelp app, um, whether, or not they, whether or not they leave a photo, but if they, if they check in, the customer Yelp actually ask the customer to leave a review. So while Yelp says you cannot ask the customer, don't ask the customer to leave your review. Um, if they find it out, they'll spank you big time. You can, there's nothing at all wrong with letting a, with asking your customers if they would check in while they're there and then let Yelp take care of asking them for a review. So anyway, just thought I'd share that little tip. Great tip, Eric. Okay. Um, anything else we want to talk about on the images, Ben? I think bottom line, you were saying, hey, if you can post a, a, an image or two a day, that's awesome. Or even better, if you can get your customers yeah. to post some images. Um, I always typically recommend, hey, uh, for, for, for businesses like that, where, where the visual elements are so big, um, images, posts, you know, the more frequently you can do that and adding value in what you do, that can also, by the way, feed into your social media strategy. Yep. So if you have a, a new, a new, a new image, post it to your website, post it to Google My Business, and post it to social media. Kill two birds with one stone. Why not? Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Here's one in interesting one, and we did a little bit of research on this ahead. Uh, Kobe wrote in saying, how can I convert people who visited my Google My Business page? How can I better convert people? So I uh, want to dive into this one a little bit because I think this is, this is a little bit of an interesting one. Um, I took a look at the address, the email address, and was able to find uh, that this was someone from uh, what's called uh, Stampini Group. So when I took a look at this, this was the, this was the let me go to the homepage here. So uh, it's called the Stampini Team. Um, they've got a, a nice little trademark, your home sold guaranteed realty. It's been trademarked. Uh, and this is a real estate group. It looks like they're primarily based in Florida, but they have um, lots of places around. It looks like it's primarily Florida though, as I was looking at it here. Um, this is their Google My Business listing. So guys, let's maybe do a little bit of forensics on this here. So this is their Google My Business listing. And this immediately got my attention. So I'm curious to talk with, with, with you guys about that. And then uh, I did a little, re uh, a little search for real estate agents uh, kind of in their region. And I thought we could talk a little bit about this. Maybe Ben, you could talk about saying, hey, what's the best way to encourage conversion on a Google My Business listing? And then Jason, maybe you could chat about a little bit about some of the flags, obviously we saw with this particular situation. Go for it, Ben. Yeah, okay, I'll get started. All right. Do the GMB listing. Yep, so if we wanna talk about things like how can you convert people from a GMB listing to your, your website, basically. Um, so first of all, your home sold guarantee realty services, Christian and Mark Stampini, yikes. Okay, well, if your name is actually that, fantastic. If not, it should be Stampini Group, I would think. Depends on, you know, we're, if we wanna talk about conversions, what happens when somebody calls your business? Um, you know, we haven't had time to do this. So, but a big conversion factor could be consistency. If that's actually not how you answer your phone, then you should probably think about the, how you're going to name, name the listing. Ah, oh, nice. So now Test. we're about to, we're about to find out how they answer the phone. Do it. Actually, I'm not going to do it live just because mm. I don't want to do any FTC recording things over a phone calls. Well, we can still hear it. We can still hear the phone ringing. So you might yeah. want to mute your yourself. Mic. <laughs> it's not ringing. 
and he was not going through. Oh, well, so there's a big conversion factor right there. Um, you have just lost a sale. So, okay. So there's one way to fail and not convert from Google My Business. Um, we know on average, 90% of business is actually generated via Google My Business. So keeping that in mind, get a call center if you can't answer the phone yourself. Um, it's cheap. So, so that's number one. And we can actually go to local service ads real quick and talk about that very quickly. Because so you, you want to you hear one quick thing here? Sure. So yeah. bottom line, I called it here and it was marked to be about virtual assistant services. Really? And nothing to do with real estate, which is very interesting here because I noticed this right here. On, I mean, they must have a, it, was a, it must be a side business or something. Must be. Anyway. So that, that equals more confusion. I, if, if somebody, if Eric is calling for a, a home to sell his home or buy a home and you're pitching VAs, Okay, so that total fail fix. Uh, I would right. separate so num- the, separate num- the brands. Number one, Kobe, guys, get your business act together. Are you a real estate firm, or are you a virtual assistant firm? Get separate those two. They're two completely different businesses. Stop mixing them together on your phone. So right, right there on your phone, your phone is having problems right there. So fix that. Number one. Oh, Kobe, Kobe's on with us. Oh, That's hey, good. Kobe. Sweet. Okay. So, so there's that. Um, let's go ahead and click on the reviews real quick. Okay. Let's go to reviews. Okay. Click on newest. Click on newest. You got it. All right. Newest. A couple hours ago, a couple hours ago. Keep going down. Let's go back. Okay. We are getting responses. So there are responses to the reviews. That's good. Um, however, be a lot more than thank you. Great. You know, or yeah, just be a lot more than thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's an opportunity you. to get to dive in a little more detail and, and for yeah. not just for search algorithms, but for people looking at the reviews. And, and exactly. And it is for, it is for the people who are looking for, for reviews. So by doing that, by just saying, thank you, um, you are basically really just saying you kind of don't have time to be give a response. Um, so give, make it a little bit more personalized. Strive for doing a response that's a, like a one or two sentence response. And, you know, yeah, basically just think about who is going to be reading this review um, and converting them. So, again, we're talking about more conversion factors. Okay, let's go out of that. Sounds great. All right. Other conversion factors you want to talk about? Yep. So you got good things like, okay, service options, on-site services, online appointments. That's good. You've got health and safety, which is excellent. That's actually a conversion factor. Um, yes. Click on more details under health and safety. So that's perfect. However, you're saying that you have online appointments. I don't recall seeing anything about online appointments uh, on the website. So again, you might be misleading the user. So if you do have online appointments, make sure that you have that you know, basically set on your website. Okay, keep going. Yeah, we are doing an optimization thing here, kind of, Jason. It's all right. <laughs> but it's about conversions. Um, and again, th- this phone number, which is the same phone number as here, is going through to a Google Voice that you then put in your name and then it forwards on to the, to the person. And when you forward on, the first thing to talk about is virtual assistant. So, I mean, boom. Oh, yeah. shoot. I just, just, I just got rid of it, the Stampini one. Shoot. Oops. Group uh, Boca Raton, Florida. Just accidentally deleted that. All right, we're almost done. Oh, sorry. Oh, I just came up with a different somebody listing. Somebody else. I just came up with a different listing. Uh, yeah, the call we'll button. We'll get to GMB, that. If, Trisha, if the call button is different in GMB, that means that usually the call tracking from Google My Business is on. That's all. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, either that it's smart campaign extensions, but I doubt it. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyway, I mean, you know, there, there was the things we saw the posts, right? The posts were all using animated GIFs, which I think we all agreed was really obnoxious. Um, yeah. The posts were using that. Yeah. So, you know, all of these things combined, it comes down to your, your business and just managing your business listings a lot better. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to stop there. Go ahead, Eric. Or Jason. No, I, I think you're, you're absolutely right. I, I do want to say one thing that we did notice when we went in, in to actually look for like real estate agents in Boca Raton, Florida. Granted, I didn't geolocate, but that's okay. Um, you had mentioned, Ben, hey, number one, um, local service ads. 
Now this yep. is not free, but this is this is another way to to, to get presence on here and it's realtors can indeed have local. It's a great way to convert um, because it doesn't necessarily look like an ad. It's just called Google screen, not doesn't say ad. So that's another interesting way to convert. Um, I did look here and as I'm diving in a little deeper, there's also a lot of really interesting stuff. I, I would take a look like Florida homes, Boca I, I my, I won't, I don't think we need to dive too much deeper in here, but my spam filter is, is going wild on a lot of this stuff. Um, and I'm also noticing that there's a lot of different listings that are tied to this that seem like they're scattered all over Florida. So, uh, heads up on this. Um, you know, if you guys are watching, be careful, watch out if you're, if you're putting in listings in a bunch of different locations. Now, if they're individual practitioner listings, that's different. But if you're actually doing locations, just heads up on that. Um, some things that are on there. So there's there's just a lot of there's a lot of stuff. Also, I will throw out Yelp. Check your Yelp listings and make sure that you've complained that you've 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 got them. Why? Because Yelp photos and reviews feed into Apple Maps. So there's a, a lot more we could go into here, but um, I think we've kind of um, I think we've kind of hit the hit the major ones here. Is there anything else you guys want to tackle as we dive into this at all or move on? Okay. All right. I'll uh, call that one here on that one as well. Let's move on to another topic. But I think you kind of get the idea. Make sure that your GMB lines up with your website, that they're accurate, uh, that that you're not doing that you're not doing any games with fake listings. You're not doing games with reviews. Uh, and that when someone does try to contact you, they actually can contact you and are not going and reaching something separate. All right, that's it for that. Um, here's an interesting one, guys. And then we've got some other live questions, lots of live questions here. Uh, any success stories from using the Google website feature in GMB? So again, we can remind people what that is, but uh, for the most part, I want you, you want to tackle that one, Ben, do you have any? Yeah, it's a, it'll be a short one. So um, I have had clients who are, that are using the GMP website because we set up with all of our packages that have said that they actually did get a conversion from it. So that was kind of neat. Um, you know, what I like to say is, is it can be an auto updating citation basically. And if you throw a link or two at it, then it can start to rank for your business name. And that's actually where it's really, I think, useful. And hey, if it can draw one conversion, even if it's only one a year, it takes five minutes to set this up. Right, and so just go into, I went, you saw I went into the Google My Business dashboard, go to the business, you went into the website tab, here it is. By the way, you do not have to buy a domain um, they, they will just publish it on a, on a, on its own little Google domain. Uh, but it's basically everything in here is really driven primarily from your GMB listing. Yeah. I will say there's one, one thing to re, uh, make sure you do here. If you, uh, if you do enable it and you hit click on publish, make sure you check on that little edit pencil there in the upper left first, and then uncheck, make this my website address. Very good. You have to do this. If you don't, it's going to replace your website with the business.site. Very good point. And that, that's actually not exactly very prominent, is it? Never has been. So if you are, so let me see if I, if I can recap this. Bottom line recommendations are, hey, doesn't hurt to go ahead and publish the built-in Google My Business website, especially if you don't have a legit website. <laughs> right. Okay. So if, if, if this is absolute bare bones, if you don't have a website, this is a great basic website to bring up. But if you, well, I'd rather uh, them see, I'd rather them do a real website, Jason, right. don't you think? Right. Exactly. And, and what, and what we didn't get to cover last week because we took the week off for 4th of July, but the previous weekend, they actually had a massive outage where the business sites were not loading across the board. And so True. for like a, almost like a whole day, you know, People had no website at all because they were using the, the business dot site. So, um, you know, buyer beware, cheat comes out expensive. So, yeah, I would definitely, you know, push everybody to do a real website. Plus, there's a lot of limitations on what you can do here. And we get a lot of people coming to the GMB forum. And somebody came yesterday. She wanted to add 
uh, of Facebook uh, contact us, you know, custom form field. And, and we told her that, that it's not eligible. That's that it's not el uh, able to do that on, on this website. So yeah, you just want to definitely be know, know what you're getting. It's great for a quick little standalone. Hey, look at, look at me. But you know, when you want to get into nuances and customization, forget it. Yeah. And, and think about it this way. I mean, understand where the business that site came from in the first place. They were initially launched in India because basically mm -hmm. what Google found out is, is that a lot of businesses in India don't have the time or money or wherewithal to build a website. So that's where they came up with the whole business dot site in the first place. Um, also it's geared towards, you know, very small merchants. But as Jason said, you are now putting your business livelihood in somebody else's hands. And it's just like with, you know, things like social media. It's like, you know, uh, yeah, anyway, it, you should own it, <laughs> I guess is the point. And if you want to really see one page website, there's a lot of providers out there, there's hosting companies that'll give you a one page website for free. So yep. Yep. just go do that. You got to do hosting anyway, so sooner or later to get an email address. So cost you a couple yeah, bucks. I mean, bottom line, get a legit domain, get a legit website, get a legit email instead of a Gmail or Hotmail address. It's better. If you don't have one, okay, this might be a good temporary substitute. But in general, go ahead, publish this. Make sure you turn us off. Do not use this as your website address on Google search and maps if you have a legit site, but publish it because as you said, Ben, hey, it's, a, it's just another citation out there that helps your overall um, uh, knowledge graph of your business. Uh, and as Ben has mentioned, he's seen occasionally some leads come through from it. So it doesn't hurt to do it, but I haven't seen a lot of case studies where, uh, I haven't seen any case studies where this site outperforms a well-built regular website. Have you, Jason? Well, not a study where it was well built, but I've I've seen I've seen countless examples where it actually outranked the actual website because it wasn't properly optimized. So there is some SEO benefits with it. And <clears throat> this one this one guy deleted his website because he didn't like it. I'm bringing this up from Trisha. She put this in the chat. It's like businesses own your shit. That's absolutely right. <laughs> That's absolutely right. That's funny. That is hilarious. Great. So the, uh, so the example the example we had was the guy deleted the website because it was outranking their actual website. But it takes Google several weeks to de-index the website once it's deleted. So yeah. this guy now had a 404 error as the top result for their business, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Got tons of questions going on here. We're going to try to get a little bit into a bit of a lightning round here if we can. Um, so Amy says, can you s at all speak about some filter reviews and ways to work with them? Yeah. Filter sure. reviews sure. and the ways to work with them. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot of examples where people are coming to the GMB forum. Um, businesses are reporting that their customers are leaving them a handful of reviews. Um, we've been escalating a lot of these, these cases and Google comes back and says, you know what? We made a mistake. Sorry. And then they just start publishing the reviews. So um, the, the best thing to do is to have the business come to, it always has to be the business. It can't be, it can't be me saying I left reviews for those business because that's not a GMB uh, specific issue. But yeah, right. if the business can do it, they can sit there and say, hey, look, we're getting some reviews. Can you take a look? Um, and then people have actually been saying that as soon as Google takes a look, all of a sudden their normal reviews start coming in. So some reviews are going to be filtered out because um, people are putting too many special characters and or words that are, are triggering you know, an automatic removal, but yeah, come to the forum as the business, not as the user. Cause we can't help. We can't help normal users if they're not associated with the business itself. Yeah. Give yep. us, give, give us screenshots. Give us the dashboard URL. Um, so Paul wanted to do a follow-up question with Apple maps. Um, he said, so is Apple maps only interested in providing driving directions to destinations uh, brick and mortar type businesses? And the answer is yes, that's what it looks like. It looks like that's what Apple Maps is really wanting is they're not necessarily interested in promoting businesses per se. They want to make maps work, right? And so a service area business is not a location on a map. Therefore, they're not interested at this point. Um, I got a feeling that may change over time. 
uh, as they're going to want to to develop that out. But right now, no, uh, they're they're only interested in brick and mortar uh, locations. So there you go. Um, Chris wrote in in response to the voice search topic, signing up for live calls, Q and A, guest announcements. Chris, I'm not quite sure. That's a kind of a cryptic question. Ben, Jason, do you have any ideas what you're what that might be about? What was it again? Um, Chris, why don't you put in the chat, if you would, uh, a little more about what you're talking about here with your voice search question. You said signing up for live calls, Q&A, guest announcements. Not quite sure what that means. So if you'd put that in the, in the chat, let us know. That would be great. Um, we'll, t we'll tackle that one if, it, if you get that one here. Um, uh, let's go down here to Carolyn. I, up, I uploaded an updated file to GMB indicating our locations, 200 of them, no longer require masks. It's been accepted. Uh, 24 hours later, I'm prompted at each location to confirm manually each one. Any ideas what's up with that? Um, Carolyn, when you're saying update manually, is it a uh, gray strike, orange strike, orange solid? Um, edit. It's very important to understand which one of those are they are um, because what could be happening is, is you could be uploading data then have say another provider, which is pushing data back. And so that's going to be a conflicting edit basically. Yeah, and Carolyn said it is an orange strike. It's an orange strike. Okay. So yeah. So if it's an orange strike, that means that Google has found data that otherwise conflicts basically with what you're trying to upload. So you need to find that conflict. It's most likely some kind of automated provider that you have. Maybe I hate to say it, I like Yext, but like a Yext, for instance, that might be controlling that. And if it's 200 locations, more than likely you've got something going on definitely with bulk. So um, yeah, yeah that, that's what I would do. I would just take a look at that issue. Okay, okay. Um, let's go down to here. Uh, Myrna asks, if you start with a GMB website, and then want to create a full site with your own URL, will you lose any SEO benefits that you've built up? Say that again. So I think she says, hey, if I start out with a GMB website, because I don't have a website, and then I ultimately launch a, 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 my own website, will I lose any SEO benefits I built up by kind of switching people's focus from the GMB website to my new legit website depends it yeah. depends how it, it's going to depend greatly on how well optimized your website is so what url are you directing people from gmb to your website is your website properly optimized is it you know over optimized for with too many keyword variables in it i mean it's you know, it, it'd be the same thing if you go from if you relaunch a website, you know, and if you don't do things properly, you could definitely always see a, a dip or you could see increases. So it's going to be a there's not one answer for everything. Yeah. The other thing is, is that, OK, so have you been building links to the GMB website? If you have, yes, that all of that link equity is going to be gone. I would not recommend personally doing a link building strategy to a GMB website. I mean, just, just like we talked about, own your stuff, own your, own your shit. I mean, get a website, get a website, get it built, build as much equity as you can to that site. Don't place all your, all your eggs in the Google basket would be my, my thought on that one. Um, Okay, and Carolyn said that she's going to research a little bit on this. She said not; she doesn't use Yex. Perhaps it was through DBA platform, but she's going oh, to check would, it out. That, that yeah. would probably do it. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Um, Chris asked a good question. Does Google want to see that you're utilizing the different kinds of posts in Google My Business? Do they care? No. Well, good, the Goog Googlers care, but for rankings, benefit? Yeah. No. Right. I mean, no, what Jason matter. says, right, I mean, Googlers, they'll look at the numbers basically globally and look at that, and, but it, it, does, it doesn't really impact anything. No. Okay. Um, Max has a good question on this one here. What do you think about review throttling in terms of reputation management? Is that a, is that a, uh, a legit strategy or not? 
what do I mean by review throttling? Like I wouldn't, I, 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 I wouldn't, th- I, I wouldn't try to come up with any way to, you know, turn on a spigot and turn it off. I mean, my, my, my rule of thumb is don't black. If you have a database of 300 customers, don't hit all 300 customers on the same day asking for a review because now you've completely exhausted, you've exhausted it. Um, you know, but I mean, it should come in, it should come naturally, you know, yeah. so that you're, you know, as people are coming in and having an experience, you have a way that you can actually, you know, communicate with them and say, Hey, thanks so much for coming in. Let us know how we did, you know, in some form of follow-up and outreach. But yeah, if you're going to just be like, Oh, let me get 10 today and 10, you know, 10 tomorrow and 10 the next month. And t-. I mean, it, I mean, people aren't, people will be able to see through if they see a bunch of reviews all coming in for the same location at the exact same day. And I just did an, I just did an interview that just went live in the uh, Claremont courier. And I tweeted it out today where basically that's what we, what they discovered. So all these recommendations were all coming in on Facebook at the exact same day. And it looks super suspicious when people are noticing that all of a sudden 18 reviews all came at the same day. And people are always asking us, you know, is this, you know, evidence of abuse? And we can't really say that it's evidence of abuse, but it's very suspect to your competitors and to your potential customers. Just a a thought. So I think review throttling became very popular through a lot of the review platforms where basically they they were trying to kind of even out the number of reviews that would come in. So like you didn't get 300 reviews in one day, right? I know that, um, yeah, uh, several of the review platforms will, will do this. They'll, they'll kind of stack them up and say, okay, hey, let's just ask five people today, five people tomorrow, five people the next day. So we'll, we'll, we'll maximum ask five people um, that we have contacts with in it to send us reviews. Um, Keep it consistent. That I think is, 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 the, is the concept here. Yeah, keep it consistent. Use a third-party tool maybe that'll go ahead and send out requests. You know, and like if it's a service-based industry, for instance, you know, I mean, it's best to send out a review request after you've done the job yep. or on the job, you know, so that's the best time to ask. If it's a restaurant, you should be asking at that same, again, that same point, you should send an email to the customer afterwards if you have their email address and ask for a review. So ask for yeah. it after you've done your service. Don't don't try and throttle it. Don't try and play a game. You know, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is what works in negative works in positive too. Uh, You know, so if you get a bunch of negative reviews, all like 15 at the same day, that looks bad. Same thing like Jason's saying, if you get 15 positive reviews at the same time, that also can look bad. So think about through those lenses. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, And just to clarify, there's a difference between review gating and review throttling. Review throttling is not necessarily against GMB's terms. Review gating is. Okay, guys, so, so just to make sure you're absolutely clear on the difference between throttling and gating on that. Um, okay, we're going to have to uh, wrap this up here real quickly. There's one more little thing I wanted to just share with you guys though, before, we, before we do. Um, I'm going camping on Sunday with my, with my nine-year-old daughter. She loves camping, so yay, I get to do this. But just want to thought I'd share this here because I tried to book a campsite uh, just yesterday. And I had to call them because their website was down. Okay, no big deal. Thank goodness their GMB listing had the proper phone number in there. But when I was talking with her, it was funny because she was saying that the site wasn't down because it was working fine for her. So, you know, I didn't want to push it too hard, but I went ahead and I, I did a little faster, slower analysis. And I also showed the screenshot, seeing that their site resource had been exceeded. And she was insisting that because she could see her site, it was just fine. And I was the one who needed to check my internet connection. So I'll just throw that out there for what, it, for what it's worth. Again, to me, the, the lesson is as a business, oftentimes there's a lot of false positives that customers will, will report. But pay attention. If you're, if you're folks are saying, you know what? I had a real hard time finding you on Apple Maps. I, or, or, you know what? You, I, well, I, I emailed you a response. Did you not get my response? And the customer's like, I didn't get your response. You know, listen to your customers. If your website's down or your email's going into spam, or maybe you haven't claimed your listing or you haven't updated your information properly, or your hours weren't correct, listen to your customers. I'll throw that out there for what it's worth here at the end. Any last parting thoughts that you guys wanna, wanna throw out here before we uh, call this a day? No, just like you said, Eric, it's not me, it's you. <laughs> it's not me, it's you. Oh, I've heard that so many times. <laughs> But that's a whole different discussion. Hey, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate having, uh, having you here with us on, on uh, this Friday session. Ben, Jason, hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. You too. 
Happy Friday, all. Thank you for coming. And we'll, and we'll see, see you next you guys. week. We'll see you guys next week. Cheers.